All righty, here we go. Chapter 8, Foundations of Math 30, Chapter 8 Review. In Chapter 8, we talked about radians. Radians was the big deal, and I spent way too much time, probably, trying to explain to you what radians are and why we need them. So if you want to go back and relive the torture that was the lesson on radians, please feel free to do that at MrMathWall.com. Here it is right here. Radian measure. woo -hoo. No other cheers from the classroom. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's, 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 a, it's life. So central angle. We talked about central angle. Hey, this is my video. I can do what I want, okay? Be quiet over there. You get, a, you get a website, and maybe I'll plug yours. And maybe I won't. Okay, so central angle. If the vertex of the angle is the center of a circle, and the arms of the circle intersect the, the uh, edges of the circle, like this in the picture, this is a central angle. A central angle can be large. It can be very small. The largest central angle that you could have without kind of overlapping is what? If these arms were stretched all the way around and reflexed around and went all the way back around to the beginning, what's the largest central angle we could have here? 360, 360 right. If, I'm, if we're talking about one full time around the circle, we could have a, an angle that is 360 degrees. So look at this. If I started here and I went all the way around to here, that's a 360 degree angle. Okay, central angle. Now, a radian. We do most of our work in degrees, but now we're introducing a brand new uh, unit of degree measurement, and that is the radian. It is a still a central angle for a circle, and they're special for circles and used very often in circles and in circle geometry. You'll notice that most of the time, if you actually want to graph a sine graph, oh, where's my on button? Okay, if you want to do y equals sine, you're going to have to have your mode in radians right here. See, radians. The counterpart is degrees. So we know a lot about degrees. Let's learn about radians. One radian, okay, one radian, and this comes from the fact, I don't know if you remember this from the lesson, but the circumference of a circle, the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times r, okay? So notice how pi is in the form of the first circumference. And if we had a radius of one in a circle, okay, this was one, the circumference would then be two pi. The circumference, the distance around the circle, is connected to the central angle. So this is where we kind of get 360 degrees and two pi sort of being connected, all right? Now, the definition of a radian, let's go back to this diagram. The definition of a radian is the angle by which we have a radius, a radius, and then this distance around the edge of the circle right here is the exact same as the radius, okay? So this situation, this is defined as one radian, one radian. So one radian is approximately equal to 57.3 degrees. 360 degrees, is about 6.28 radians, which we've determined and we've figured that out, okay? Now, what is 6.28 radians approximately? Well, that's equal to two pi radians. So 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians. 180 degrees equals one pi radian. So we could make all sorts of conversions if you have a certain number of degrees, and you wanted to find radians, you just use this special uh, proportion right here. 180 over pi equals degrees over radians. And you plug your known value in and you solve for the missing value. And you can get some pretty exact numbers. So we talked about radians. What is a radian? Why do we need radians? And again, radians are used for the trig functions, for graphing and all sorts of things like that quite heavily. So it's very useful then. All right. So that was 8.1. What is the radian? And this neat little proportion, which isn't highlighted in your textbook, is definitely highlighted in my videos, and it should help you quite a bit. Remember that one. Put that in your little study sheet and make sure you've got that memorized. Mm -hmm. All right. So 8.2. Let's move to 8.2. Wow, we did a lot of work there in 8.1. Okay, so graphs of sine and cos. You'll remember that the sine graph, and some of this disappeared, looks like, the sine graph kind of looks like this, right? Goes up, starts at zero, 
goes up to a maximum of 1, right here, goes back down to 0 at 180, goes to a minimum of negative 1 at 270, and then back up to 0 at 360, or 2 pi. So that's 2 pi, this is 1 pi. Consequently, 90 degrees is half of 180, so that's pi over 2, right? Um, uh, 30 is 1 sixth of 180, so 30 degrees is pi over 6. 60 degrees is a third of 180, so consequently 60 degrees is pi over 3. Okay, and so on, and you can do multiples, and we did that also in one of the lessons. So um, we talked about the fact that sine graphs and cosine graphs are periodic functions. That is, that if you extend this axis out this way and this way, you'll see that this um, pattern continues, right? It's like this, boom, 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 forever and ever and ever. So it's a periodic function. That means it comes around and is repeatable. We talked about important uh, terms like midline. The equation for the midline is always y equals some number, and that would be the y uh, value that is right in the middle of the graph. The amplitude is the measure from the midline to the maximum or the midline to the minimum point. They both should be the same. And the period is the length, the literal length of one um, complete cycle here. So one, that's the wavelength, if you're thinking about science, is the same as the period. And there are the definitions and diagrams to go with that. Okay, sine, cos, so that's 8.2, sine, cos. 8.3, graph. So here's where we started to play around a little bit with the different parameters of the graphs, right? Um, oh, actually, maybe not in 8.3, maybe that was 8.4. But 8.3, we actually did some calculations of non, the graphs that weren't just y equals sine x or y equals cos x. It was like, this graph here is obviously not just y equals sine x because the period's all off, the, uh, the amplitude's all off, and it's been shifted up a little bit and so on. So we can find the different things like the equation of the midline. We talked about how to do that, the period, and the amplitude, and so on. So that was this section. The next section, that's where we, welcome to school, hey. The next section, that's where we talked about equations of different sinusoidal functions. So we took a graph and we were able to determine what the equation was by, f by figuring out what A does to a sine graph, what B does to a sine graph, what C does, and what D does. So we looked at Desmos a lot. We took, we took these notes down that described you know, the action of what A does, what B does, and what C does. So you might want to look back to this video if, you're, if you missed this day, you're a little fuzzy on this. Um, so we can take a graph that's shown, and we can determine what the amplitude is, what the midline is, what the period length is, and if it's been shifted you know, up or down or whatever, or left or right, and uh, we could get A, B, C, and D, and then plug that into the equation. Okay, so that was 8.4, that was 8.4. 8.5, um, the good thing about the uh, end of chapter six, seven, and eight is that it really ends with regression functions using the graphing calculator. So that's really what 8.5 is. We ask the graphing calculator to give us a sine reg. So a regression function in the form of y equals sine something. And so we plot our points, we do sine reg, and we would get an equation that looks something like this here. And this is a question. Number three that we did, uh, that's an example that we did from 8.5, okay? So sine reg, put your, your data in your lists, and then sine reg there, and that's 8.5. So again, what I'd encourage you to do is to go back to your uh, homework assignments, make sure they're all done. And if they are all done, if it's been a while since you've, did, since you've done them, then uh, maybe you should do some questions over again. Please look at the review assignment. There's, uh, I think there's a cumulative review, perhaps, um, six to eight cumulative review let me just let me just double check that yeah so page 586 um, and I will um, let me just let me just make this a little bit bigger yeah wonderful mask it got on there is that beautiful okay here's our textbook and page 586 where is it 586 is the chapter 6 to 8 cumulative review so if you want some extra practice um, here's a uh, lots of good questions and the answers are in the textbook there uh, and being that the test is tomorrow for you guys, if you haven't started this already, you um, 
certainly could do that tonight and work through as many questions as you possibly could. There's only 15 questions, so this would be a good, you know, might be a good hour of uh, studying or whatever, but you would do that anyways, right? So that's, that's not that bad, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so chapter 6 to 8, cumulative review, right there, page 586. I would encourage you to take a look at that. And watch these videos and go to this website. Hmm, what website's that? Oh, yeah, mrmouthful.com. You might want to go to that website there and uh, check out all of the review videos for chapter 8. And this review video will be going right down there in that section right there, and you'll be able to see this exact uh, video. All right, anybody have any questions? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, so my students, now that you're graduating, you think I should uh, add some kind of subscription service to my website and my channels and my videos so I can make some money, right? You can make money. That's right. Right now, I don't make any money off these videos. Oh, not that I would anyways. I'm probably missing out on at least 12 cents of revenue. But anyways. All right. Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right. You guys good? Hope so. All right, so make sure you study hard tonight.